Hello folks, and what I got for you today is another YouTube video, but this one is going to be a little bit different. What I got on my YouTube channel today is I'm going to make a baking video. Yes, I'm going to make a baking video, and what we're going to cook is an Indiana Old Fashioned Sugar Cream Pie. Why am I cooking this sugar cream pie? Well, I got a newsletter and it included a recipe for an Indiana Sugar Cream Pie, and it looked pretty easy and pretty simple. And, and I'm in the, you know, I got a big sweet tooth. So I was like, what the heck? Let's make an Indian sugar cream pie. And the other question is, why am I filming it? Because, I don't know, I just felt like filming it. I felt like I want to do a little something different for, a, for my YouTube channel. And, and baking videos or something people like to do. I don't know. Maybe I just want a different kind of attention. Because my backpack videos and my camping gear videos and my general backpacking advice... Those, those don't seem to get a lot of attention because when you look at the, the world of uh, entertainment out there, there's entire channels dedicated to, to cooking and baking, but when it comes to backpacking gear, there's not ch TV channels for that. There's people on YouTube with 5,000 followers, <laughs> okay? So really what I'm after is more attention. That's the, that's the gist, gist of this video. More attention and I'm just going to have some fun. So, without any more rambling, we're going to get down to it. I'm going to bake a sugar cream pie, show you how to do it, and we're going to go through it step by step. Now, if you're new to baking, the first thing you really need to do when you're baking something is make sure you have all the ingredients, get all those ingredients together, and then you also need to make sure you have the measuring tools for those ingredients. So, this is a very simple pie. It, it only has six ingredients if you include the crust. And I got all my ingredients here, you know. I've got my dry ingredients, my liquid ingredients. And then I also have all my measuring devices. I've got my measuring cup, my measuring spoon, and I also have my liquid measuring cup because we're gonna be putting two cups of heavy cream in here. Now, you need to make sure you have your liquid measuring cup. I've seen people that, that measure their liquids with their solid measuring cup, and that to me, that's, that's blasphemous. That's, that, that's basically breaking one of the Ten Commandments, if you ask me. Yeah, this guy paid attention in home economics in high school. I, I actually really enjoyed that class. Got to bake some stuff, got to cook some stuff, learned a few things. So you really need to have separate liquid and dry ingredient measuring cups. Okay, so before you get started, make sure you get all of your, your ingredients together. And then, and then let's get going. For the next part of the video, we're going to take a break from having the camera focused on my gorgeous face and we're just going to get right into it. So let's just start adding the dry ingredients into this concoction. We're going to start with the sugar. We need a cup of sugar. So I'm going to fill up the sugar cup here and I'm going to make sure I do it over the mixing bowl because if I get any extra sugar, it just ends up in the mixing bowl. So that's a lot easier than, than cleaning it off the countertop. So here we go. Yeah, let's get in there, level it out. I'm not going to be super exact with this. Uh, we're just going to shake it. And, yeah, that's definitely a cup. Probably a little more than a cup there. Usually, you can, if you want to be super exact, you can use like a separate surface and, and scrape off the, the extra. But this is probably going to be more like a cup and a, a tenth. I don't know. All right, now the next ingredient is going to be our, our flour. And this recipe calls for four tablespoons of flour. So we're gonna, we're gonna dive right into my flour container. And I'm gonna use this knife here to level off the flour. I'm gonna be a little more exact with the flour. And I just level off that extra flour. And then you have a level tablespoon. You usually wanna have a level amount of dry ingredients and you use some sort of uh, utensil to, to level those ingredients. Uh, it's two tablespoons, three tablespoons, and then, oh, that one had a little bit of air gap in it. Oh boy, I'm really having trouble with this fourth tablespoon. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. And that's four tablespoons. And then the final dry ingredient is going to be a, is it, what is it, a, a quarter teaspoon of salt. Quarter teaspoon is sometimes, sometimes you might not even have a quarter teaspoon measuring spoon, but you know, just, just go to your home goods store and get yourself 
a nice little set of teaspoon and tablespoons. So you have everything, everything that you need in the, in the, the, the small amount of, of measuring devices. So the next thing I have to do is mix all these dry ingredients for you. And I sat there and I said, get all your proper measuring devices and utensils. Well, I forgot the wire whisk and later we're gonna need a rubber scraper. So I'll get one of those too. I am back with the wire whisk and the rubber scraper. We're gonna save this rubber scraper for later when we add the, the uh, wet, we mix it all up and we have to get everything into the pie pan. So next we're gonna whisk all these dry ingredients together. And then after that, we're gonna add our, our liquid ingredients. Now the liquid ingredients calls for two cups of heavy cream. And I already actually made this recipe. So we're just gonna probably just add the rest of this heavy cream. Do I need to shake this before? Shake and sh chill and shake. Well, let's shake it up before we add it in there. There we go. Okay, so heavy whipping cream. Here we go. Two cups of this. Two cups. One pint, two cups. All right. There we go. Let's get let's get a real good look at that. A uh, little more. Oh, okay, I think that's that's two cups. A little bit left over. We'll save that for I don't know what we'll save it for. So what we're gonna do with the, the cream here is we're gonna slowly add this in into the dry ingredients. We're not gonna dump it all in at one time, we're just gonna stir it. Alright. There we go. And it's stirring up real nice. Let's just give a little break here, give it a good stir. At this point, I got about half the cream in there. I'm just gonna throw in the, the vanilla extract. And we need, this recipe calls for a tablespoon of vanilla extract. Now I have this little itty bitty thing of vanilla extract because I really don't use a lot of vanilla extract. And I, I usually just buy one of these little itty bitty containers when I have a recipe that calls for vanilla extract. I can't tell you the last thing I used vanilla extract for, but it's, uh, it's been a while, but I still had some left over and it worked out perfectly, perfectly for this recipe. And I heard a little bit a while ago that, that there was some sort of shortage of vanilla and I don't know if it was due to high demand or if it was due to some sort of supply shock, but yeah, there was a shortage of vanilla. And uh, let me mix this all up here. It's really getting that nice, nice cream uh, hue to it. It was, it was very white with just the dry ingredients, but now it's just a little bit darker shade, a little bit, a little bit creamier. So back to the vanilla. Yeah, I heard there was a shortage of vanilla, and even these little itty bitty things, they're actually quite expensive these days. Vanilla ice cream seems to be a little bit more expensive. I don't know. There's something going on with vanilla. I uh, probably could look into it a little more. Ah, oh, all righty. And then let's just dump the rest of this cream in here. I think we're about good to go on that. So let's get every little drop out of there. Yeah. I probably could, let's, you know, why not? Let's just, <laughs> let's just rubber scrape it out of the measuring cup. Why not? And this is a rubber scraper here, folks. This is not a spatula. It's a common misconception. It is a rubber scraper. So let's just mix up, give this all a good, good stir before we start pouring into the pie pan. Now we have to bake in an unpaked pie shell for an hour at 350 degrees. That'll give me uh, time to, to get this in before, to take this out of the oven before my eight o'clock TV show start. And uh, so, can't wait for that. But here we go, this, this baby's all just about ready to go. I'm not sure how much I need to mix this up, but I think it's probably just about good. Now this is pretty liquidy at this point. And, but once it bakes up, it gets, it, it takes on a very spongy texture. And you'll see that when I take it out of the oven here. It's gonna have a very spongy texture. 
But it's, uh, it's, it's nice to see how quickly this recipe was to put together. It took me probably uh, no more than five minutes. The video has currently been running for about eight minutes and, and I'm pretty much done here. I probably am over stirring this, but you know, whatever. I think we're about good. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get the toaster, the, my toaster oven going. I like to bake my things. I like to bake stuff in the toaster oven because the toaster oven results in a lot better just consistency with baking than the regular oven. So we're gonna put this in the toaster oven and see how it is. Okay, bake, 350 degrees for one hour. Get that, get that preheating. Toaster oven also seems to bake things a little bit faster. So it may, I may not have to keep this in there for, for a whole hour. We'll see when the, when the crust, when the top layer starts to brown, that's usually means it's, it's done. So here we go. Now we're going to pour this all into this. This is just a regular graham cracker pie shell. And the reason I'm using this is because I'm feeling lazy. I didn't want to make, I didn't really want to make my own pie shell. It is pretty easy to make your own pie shell, actually. You really just need flour and water. And I think, I think a little bit of salt is really all you need if you wanted to make your own pie shell. So, but maybe, maybe for my next sh episode, uh, in which I think I'm going to make pumpkin pie, because actually I bought some pumpkin pie that was on sale at the grocery store, and... And I decided to get it and, and maybe make it because um, I, I do like pumpkin pie. I, I need to get some whipped cream to go with that pumpkin pie. Maybe ice cream, pumpkin pie auto mode. But I'm definitely ha going to have to get from some, some whipped cream uh, or maybe some Cool Whip to, to go with that pumpkin pie. I like to add that on there to give it a little bit more panache. I don't know if I use that word correctly, but you know what I mean. Just a little bit more. Uh, pizzazz. So back to the sugar cream pie here. I'm just trying to use this rubber scraper to get every little every little drop out of here into the pie pan, and it fits fits just about perfectly. I'm gonna have to be careful uh, when I take this this pie pan over to the toaster oven and put it in there. So let's just scrape every last bit here off the sides of the, the mixing bowl and get a little bit in there, a little last bit in there. Okay, that's probably about as good as I'm gonna get it. And then, now what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to do the customary, customary taste of the, of the pie mix. Oh yeah. You know, for having only five ingredients, this is, it's pretty tasty. I can't wait to try this. So, all right. Now, we're gonna move this thing over to the toaster oven when the toaster oven tells me it's done preheating. And uh, and then I'm gonna get back to you when this is done. I'm gonna take it out of the oven, show it to you, show it to you what it looks like, and then we'll have to let it cool, and, and maybe I'll be able to eat it uh, later. Might have to wait until tomorrow morning. We'll see. I'll catch you later. Okay, the pie's done, and it was interesting cooking this in the toaster oven. It turned out a little bit different than the other pie I cooked in the uh, in the regular oven. So, pull this baby out here. Okay, it definitely cooked faster than I probably would have liked it to, and it also came out of the. Uh, burst out of its the pie pan way more than in the regular oven as you can see by this uh, this this trail of <laughs> of pie that went over the edge and it's definitely browner than i cooked it before so probably overcooked it um and i put it on this pizza pan so the bottom would be less prone to burning um, in this little toaster oven because just have the that heat real close to it but I, I definitely probably should have cooked this baby in a regular oven it definitely cooked up way more thorough than i expected to so we're just gonna let this thing cool off 
sit for until it cools off. I may not be able to eat tonight. We'll see. I'll be up till 10. It's currently 7.50, so it may not fully cool, and I may have to wait until the morning. I'll get back to you later when it's time to eat. Hello again. I am back for the thrilling conclusion of the first episode of Cooking with Dan, in which I cook the Indiana Old Fashioned Sugar Cream Pie, the, the state pie of Indiana. And, well, we're going to try this thing out and, and see how it tastes, and then and we'll, we'll make a final conclusion. So I'm going to move the camera here down a little bit, and, and here we go. Here's the pie. And I got to tell you, I got to be honest, the top of this burned a little bit more than I would have liked it to. Um... Definitely a little more browning on top than the first go I had at this. So it's because I cooked in the toaster oven and it just cooked a lot quicker than I thought it would. As opposed to a normal oven. I have cooked pies in the toaster oven before and it's been alright. But uh, this time around, this pie was just a little bit more, I don't know, fragile <laughs> than, than usual. So... Actually, I kind of like the crispy, the crispier top crust. It adds a nice little difference in texture. And then the bottom of it is definitely mm, a little pretty, pretty well cooked as well. So let's, let's take a bite here. Let's dive in and take my first bite. Okay, well, uh, I like how it turned out. It's tasty enough, but I do believe that I overcooked it, uh, unfortunately. I don't know if I'm going to do the toaster oven for this pie if I do it again. The crust is definitely overcooked. If you can see, that crust is yeah nice and burnt. And then the pie itself isn't very thick. It gets very poofy. I mean, the whole thing was was higher than this high end, but, but now it's kind of, what, an inch thick? The whole thing doesn't get very thick at the end of the day. So, so, I have to say, after it's all said and done, I like the filling. I really screwed up the crust <laughs> by cooking it in the toaster oven. And you know what? I'm just going to abandon the fork and I'm just going to dive right in. All right, bye. See you later, people. Thanks for tuning in to the first episode of Cooking with Dan. There might be more, we'll see. Welcome to the bonus coverage portion of this video in which I eat the a piece of the, the uh, Indiana old fashioned sugar cream pie uh, the morning after. This has been this has been in the refrigerator all night, so it's definitely gonna taste different than last night. So I'm gonna dive in and we're gonna see how this tastes. Okay, let's see here. Oh yeah, I'd say that's an overall improvement from the previous night's flavor. Um, definitely more more structure to it. the The crust is still you know overcooked, but it seems to have softened a little bit. I don't know, <laughs> but I, I kind of like that I overcooked the top of it. It adds a little bit different of a of a texture to it. Um, but I don't like that I overcooked the crust. Overall, though, the sugar cream pie is definitely better after sitting in the refrigerator for a night rather than just eating it after letting it cool for two or three hours uh, after you cooked it. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed the bonus coverage.